today on Straight Talk Africa, Nigerian elections have been postponed due to security concerns. Authorities say more African troops are being deployed to fight Boko Haram. That's coming up next right here on Straight Talk Africa. Hello, welcome to Straight Talk Africa. It's Wednesday, February 11th. I am Shaka Sali. And hello to all our viewers and listeners on the continent and elsewhere. I'm Mariam Diallo, your social media reporter. Today, we'll discuss the postponement of the presidential and general elections in Nigeria. So much to cover on this program, Shaka, today. And coming up later in our STA inbox, we'll share thoughts from our audience that we were able to get from the ground and on social media. We'll reveal some of them ahead on Straight Talk Africa. But first, following many weeks of election campaigning, the Nigerian Independent Electoral Commission has moved the date of the nation's presidential and national assembly elections that was set to take place on February 14th. My colleague, Paul Sisko, has more. If the security of personnel, voters, election observers and election materials cannot be guaranteed. The life of innocent young men and women, as well as prospects for free, fair, credible and peaceful elections would be greatly jeopardized. Consequently, the Commission has decided to reschedule the 2015 general elections thus. The national elections, i.e. presidential and national assembly, are now to hold on March 28, 2015. INEC Chairman Adahuro Jega announced the six-week postponement last Saturday. Our hope is that with this rescheduling, the security services will do their best to ensure that the security environment needed for safe and peaceful conduct of the 2015 elections is rapidly put in place. Opposition candidate Muhammadu Buhari acknowledges the security challenges in the north, but questions the Electoral Commission's decision. The independence of INEC has been severely compromised. As a Nigerian and a presidential candidate in the election, I share in the disappointment and frustration of this decision. Our country is going through a difficult time in the hands of terrorists. Any act of violence can only complicate the security challenges in the country and provide further justification to those who would want to exploit every situation to frustrate the democratic process in the face of certain defeat as the polls. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry called the decision to postpone disappointing, adding, political interference with the Independent National Electoral Commission is unacceptable. After yet another attack and more threats from Boko Haram, Niger's parliament authorized sending troops to fight the violent militants in the north. Along with Niger, Nigeria, Chad, Cameroon and Benin are planning a deployment of almost 9,000 troops to the region. Much of Buhari's support is in the troubled northeastern region of Nigeria. Our desire for change must surpass their desperation to hold on to power at all costs. We are clearly dealing with people who feel they can get away with placing their personal interests over those of our nation and its citizens. What is at stake is the very survival of our country. Across the next six weeks, INEC will be distributing voter cards to thousands of Nigerians displaced by the insecurity. Political observers say the race for the presidency between incumbent President Goodluck Jonathan and Muhammadu Buhari is too close to call. Paul Sisko, VOA News. Thanks, Paul, for that interesting report. Uh, now, for more on the postponement of the polls, I am joined by Kayode Idowu, spokesperson of the Independent National Electoral Commission, or INEC. He joins us via telephone link up from the Nigerian capital, Abuja. Good evening, Mr. Idowu. 
Good evening, Chaka. How are you? I am hugely terrific. Uh, how is Abuja? Abuja is fine. And how is Washington? Washington is equally terrific. Now, I was talking with some people, of course, and uh, they are concerned about uh, the postponement of the election. Why did you postpone the election when the Council of State, which is a very, very, very powerful body in your country, gave you the green light to go ahead? And it met last week on Thursday. Thank you, Chaka, for that question. But let me correct the impression. The Council of State did not give time the green light to go ahead. By law, the division is final, and I need to underscore that because the commission is an independent commission. The law provides for the commission to take that decision. And we should be assured that even this is credible is the decision of the commission. Now, what did the commission decide to schedule them? The commission is, even though it is independent, it is also realistic. It has to look at the reality confronting it and be guided by those realities. And if the realities are such that the environment is not conducive to going ahead with the election on the on February 28th and, and February 14th and February 28th, then the sensible thing to do is to reschedule. And that's what the commission has done. But what about uh, the fact that uh, your boss, uh, Professor Atahiru Jega, has been really on record saying that uh, INEC is ready to go. Uh, he must, frankly, have been consulting very, very widely. Why did you all of a sudden get this letter from the National Security Advisor, a man who apparently last month was in London at Chatham House, a major, of course, a political think tank, saying that the elections, in fact, should be postponed. How come you were not in the loop? Well, you see, Chaka, these things, I mean, happen in, in governance and administration. But let me, let me, let me also be clear that the commission on Wednesday last week received a formal letter from the NSC forwarding a letter by the Chief of Defense Staff advising on the need to schedule the election. And they gave a reason, a good reason, why that should be so. As a of fact, the security services gave two options. The first option is to look out the, 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 or to conduct elections in the other areas of the country and leave out the trouble not to. But that for IMEC has some issues because it makes the prospect of an inconclusive election highly likely. And it will be a waste at the end of the day if you go ahead without that section of the country and you conduct elections and the elections end up inconclusive. The second option that they recommended, which was the recommendation, the second option they recommended is to reschedule by six years. And given the reality on ground, because there was a question that came up and he said the very consultation, if we ignore this advice, what alternative security are even doing that? There was no answer to that question. So it seems sensible to the commission that it should be guided by the attack. And so it took this decision, it was its decision, and it, 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 it took that decision. What about the fact that uh, Mr. Sambo Dasuki, of course, the National Security Advisor, among other things uh, in his letter, he writes that uh, the election should initially be postponed for six weeks so that 
the security forces can crush, those are his words, Boko Haram. What if, in fact, Boko Haram is not crushed within six weeks? What happens? Do you postpone the election again, or do you, in fact, have the election suspended indefinitely? We also should have a positive attitude towards the state. The security services, or for good reason, believe they can deal with the challenge in Turkey. They are into multinational locations in the neighboring country to deal with the challenge of the agency in the north. And there is no reason why we should tell that it is possible. Because when it's there, there is no window, no constitutional window to have another ship, as we understand now. If, if in the, in the cabinet that was advised, first strength within constitutional, constitutional position, the law, the culture of the country allows Election to hold not later than April 29, which is Saturday to the hand of that day. And so it is fully within constitutional position. Any other proposal for the cabinet will be going out of constitutional position, and I'm sure that nobody is compensating or envisaging that. Now, Mr. Kayodo uh, Idowe. Um, I gather that uh, you have 68.8 uh, 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 million of registered voters. Could you please tell us how much of that percentage uh, has been uh, uh, cleared to vote that has unfettered access to uh, voter cards so far? I got yesterday 69.68%. Of that number have collected their voter cards, namely 47 million 965,851 as of yesterday. And you see, in Nigeria, we have a cultural attendance. There is usually a fight in the last days of our Mexico. If we were to go ahead with each election as we are previously scheduled. You can be sure that in the last day, because the commission did say, it will be the collection of the final voter card will continue until the end of the election. And you can be sure that in those last days, there will be a part that will take us beyond for the citizen. I see. So, collection is going to I, I see. Well, unfortunately, time happens not to be our best ally, Mr. Kayode Idowu the spokesperson or professor Atahir Jega, the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, or INEC. He joined us via telephone link up from Abuja. Now for reaction from the ground, I am joined by Kayode Akintemi, general manager of Channels Television, our Nigerian partner station. Good evening, Kayode. Good evening, Shaka. How are you? I am usually terrific. Uh, you look terrific, my friend. It's a pleasure, of course, uh, to have you again on Straight Talk Africa. Thank you. You are ever so kind with your compliments, Shaka. Thank you. Profound, of course, uh, honored for your compliments. Kayode. Now, Kayode, you had, of course, uh, uh, another Kayode, of course, of no relation to you. This is a man, of course, uh, at the seat of power in Abuja. Uh, he seems, frankly, to find no problem as to why the elections were postponed. What is your take? What are you getting from people downtown Lagos, for example? Well, with the postponement of the election, a number of Nigerians thought it was going to create some problems. But fortunately for the country, it has not created any problem. Uh, a lot of people can see some amount of sense from what uh, the INEC has taken in terms of steps to make sure that we ensure that everybody is enfranchised, everybody has got a chance to vote. The number of voters, permanent voters card that um, 
has been distributed so far has been not good enough. Everyone wants to be able to vote, so there is a need for people to have it. But also, apart from that, is the issue of the Northeast. The military has made it clear that it is not able to fight a war that is happening internally within the country, and at the same time to deploy the number of soldiers that is required to help in ensuring security and safety of ballot boxes, ballot papers, the equipment and infrastructure of INEC and their personnel all around the country. That's what has brought us thus far. What about uh, the fact that Coyote, uh, uh, the last time I checked, uh, it is the police, frankly, that is supposed to be providing security whenever you have had elections. How come you now enter the military, the Nigerian military? Well, you have a point there, Shaka. There is the truth that one would expect the police, but we have precedent that has been established in the country that the number of policemen deployed across the country, I'm sure you probably, you will most likely know that Nigeria is a big country, twice or about three times the population of the United Kingdom, and we don't have that large number of policemen to police the entire country. Country. Talk less of being able to manage on a specific day a situation where you have hundreds of polling units all around the country. So there is a need for another security agency like the military to join efforts with our policemen to ensure that everybody is secured. So I guess that is the justification for the action of government in bringing the military to support. Though there are people who have questioned the sense in having the military that should be fighting wars and battles either in Nigeria or on peace mission being used to manage election. It's unusual, but it's the situation we have in Nigeria. It is what has worked for us in previous elections, and I guess it's something we have to stay with. You know, Kyle, there, there are some people who are saying, wait a minute, uh, Professor Jirga is an impeccable man. Uh, he has all along, in fact, been saying that uh, uh, his organization is ready to deliver. And yet, he also, he also happens to be aware, frankly, that uh, at least the three northeastern states have been experiencing security problems, uh, of course, because of Boko Haram. How do you respond to some people who will say, this man has actually been compromised? Because, let's face it, Boko Haram has been an issue in Nigeria since 2009. What makes anybody think that this issue can be resolved in the next six weeks? Well, as someone who has his finger on the pulse of reportage of what is happening in the country, because we have very good and excellent reporters all working with us at Channels Television, the feedback and having communication or contact with other people all around the country, there is that amount of concern that the way this is looking, the army just or the military might just not be able to conclude whatever battle that they are running against Boko Haram in the northeast. If that becomes the case, if that becomes the case that in six weeks from now this battle is not completed and the military comes back and say we're sorry we're not able to complete the battle and we still need more time. Professor Jega has been kind enough to make it clear to Nigerians that he is not going to be able to extend extend, uh, extend the uh, or postpone the election any more time. He hasn't got that time. So if that happens, and this is just a presupposition here, or just an assumption, let's assume that that happened, we will have a constitutional crisis on our hands because our constitution has made it clear the number of days before the swearing in that we must have the election and the period within which there is opportunity for those who might have lost the election and, and are unhappy with the result to have a chance to 
to go to court or go to tribunals to try and resolve the matter before it gets to the point of swearing in. So there is a potential for a serious challenge ahead. But let me not be the uh, apostle of doom, just saying that there is a potential for that to happen. But we are hoping, because Nigerians are eternally optimistic, that everything will work out. The military will beat the Boko Haram with the support of the Chadians and the Nigerians in, in the northern part of the country. Come together and they will win them. And come March 28, we will be able to have our election. And of course, uh, your constitution requires that uh, you have a new government in place in Asorok, May 29. We'll have to stop right there. And I would like to thank Channel's Television General Manager Kayode Akintemi, who joined us from Lagos. Now we'll pause for a short break and we would like to remind you that Straight Talk Africa is now on the social networking website Twitter. And we are tweeting live. Follow us at VOA Shaka. That's VOA Shaka and join in on today's discussion with your questions and comments. Don't forget to use the hashtag VOA Nigeria 2015. And we are still on Facebook. Just enter the keyword Straight Talk Africa, become a fan and connect with other friends of the Voice of America. We'll be right back with you, so please don't go away. The Independent National Electoral Commission was established by the 1999 Constitution of Nigeria to organize elections into various political offices in the country. The functions of INEC include the following. Organize and supervise all elections to the offices of the President and Vice President, State Governor and Deputy Governor, Senate, House of Representatives and the House of Assembly of each state. Register political parties in accordance with the provisions of the Constitution and Act of the National Assembly. Monitor the organization and operation of the political parties, including their finances, conventions, congresses, and party primaries. And arrange the annual auditing of the funds and accounts of political parties. Publish a report on such examination and audit for public information. Sia Niyama Karoma, the First Lady of Sierra Leone, speaks to VOA on the Ebola crisis. I would want the people in West Africa to know that Ebola is real. Ebola kills. Early detection and prompt treatment can save lives. And I'm asking our people not to victimize or stigmatize survivors. Ebola is a challenge, but together we'll all be able to overcome it. That was Sia Niyama Karoma, the First Lady of Sierra Leone, speaking to VOA Africa on the Ebola crisis. This is Straight Talk Africa on The Voice of America. What is your opinion about today's topic? Call us at 202-619-3111. U.S. country code 1. When you call, remember the following. Ask only one question, keep your comment brief, and turn down the volume on your radio or television. Now let's return to Straight Talk Africa. Thank you very much, uh, Esther Giduya, and welcome back. And today we are discussing the postponement of the presidential and general elections in Nigeria. Now, joining us here in our Washington studios are two distinguished guests. First, Professor Adebowale Adefuye, the Nigerian ambassador to the United States. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, I have to say I'm profoundly honored and exceedingly humbled to have the opportunity to host you for the first time. Thank you very much. Uh, we, it's a pleasure to be here and to explain to our American friends uh, what is happening. Uh, with regards to the situation in our country. You're most welcome. And of course, I uh, remember that you were supposed to be here about three years ago. I don't know what happened, but I'm glad you are here today. Well, I was actually here last week. I'm talking about Straight Talk Africa platform itself. Well, the, I don't know what, how, you, how you differentiate your programs, but this time last week, I was here in these same studios on Nigeria Decides 2015. It was a one-hour program. I was here with an official of the State Department, 
uh, Mr. Aminu Gamawa from, from Harvard. And we had a wonderful uh, discussion on, on Nigerian elections. And we were actually joined by Mr. John Momo, chairman of Channel's Television. It was uh, in Lagos. Terrific. So it's the second time coming. I actually thought this program is a continuation of that program. <laughs> since that, uh, since between that time and now, the election had been postponed. I thought they wanted, they wanted me to come here and, and um, give some clarifications about Ter the postponement. Terrific, terrific. And of course, uh, Sylvester O'Kelly, the national chairman of the USA movement for Buhari, Osi, Osi Banjo campaign. He also serves as the chair of the executive committee for the Maryland and Nigeria sister states program. Of course, it's a pleasure always to host you on Straight Talk Africa. Sylvester. Always an honor to be with you, bro. Interesting. And later in the program, we'll give you, the audience, a call to call, to chill, to call and talk with our guests. The number to call is 202-619-3111. The U.S. country call code is one. Well, let me come to you uh, immediately, Mr. Ambassador. What, what is the situation like? Uh, are we going to get uh, uh, the poll or no? March 28, uh, is it in fact carved out of stone? Or do we face a possibility of being told that uh, the security situation does not warrant to hold an election? Well, we, let me say that we in Nigeria, we are a very optimistic set of people. And when we plan to do something, we put in all our efforts and we always achieve it. We plan for an election on March 28, and I can assure you, by the grace of God, it shall happen. It shall be free, fair, credible, and peaceful. And the result, the outcome of the election will reflect the will of the people of our country, Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So, um, we, in, um, you've already heard from what the two candidates have told you. They've given you the reasons for the postponement of the elections for six weeks. Mm. Those, those reasons are purely infallible. It, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are bound, they are influenced by reason, realism, mm -hmm. and need to get a free, fair, credible election that will command local acceptance and international credibility. Thank you. What about that, uh, O'Kelly? I know you have been complaining. As a matter of fact, the man you support uh, uh, issued a statement suggesting that the postponement, in his view, was both disappointing and provocative. What exactly did he mean by that? And that is actually the fact in the sense that uh, INEC is an independent commission and should be left to conduct their duty independently and report to the president. Secondly, the government has succeeded in labeling our security forces, our men and women who work very hard as incapable, as inefficient, as people who uh, do nothing, which is a lie because Nigerians are hardworking, just like His Excellency just said. We are hardworking people. We are, you know, we go for it. Uh, and Nigerians have fought. Uh, you, are, you are aware of uh, uh, ECOMOG. Nigeria has fought in Yugoslavia a uh, UN peacekeeping mission. There is nothing Nigerian forces cannot do if given the opportunity and also the resources that they need. So Nigerian security forces can defeat Boko Haram. Their sons, in fact, fought during the Second World War. They were in Burma. They so were Nigeria in the Nigeria is still the best, Congo. the best in Africa when it comes to all those things. So how come we cannot defeat Nigeria when neighboring countries like Chad, Cameroon, including women and vigilantes, are you know, wrestling with Boko Haram? In fact, if it wasn't for Nigeria being the leader of ECOMOG, we probably be not having the kind of democracy or semblance of democracy that we have in Sierra Leone and Liberia. Thank you. So what happened? You're having... Please. Yeah, uh, th that, that is the situation in the sense that uh, I would say that there's kind of undermining when politics get into... The military should be left alone. Police should be left alone, just as it is done in this country. So when politics get into that, they use it to flex muscles. Just like yesterday, the uh, army surrounding Tunumbu, uh, this is not where you need to fight the war. Go and deal with the Boko Haram. Stop dealing with governors, stop dealing with senators and so on. That is not the time. Unfortunately, the time happens not to be our best ally. You're tuned into Straight Talk Africa. We'll have more of a discussion in a moment. But first, here is Mariama. Take it away, Mariama. Well, thanks, Shaka. Still to come, we'll reveal some of the outstanding feedback we've received from our passionate audience through social media. But now, here is our letter of the week.
Okubo Igodalo from Abuja in Nigeria writes, The postponement of Nigeria's presidential election gives added time to the Independent National Electoral Commission to better prepare for the election. It gives more time to the electorate to receive their voter registration cards and it allows more time for the political parties to explain their vision if they have any. The new date falls within the constitutionally prescribed time frame for elections to be held. So there is absolutely no need for bitterness or hard feelings. Like Voice of America on Facebook. Follow VOA on Twitter. Join VOA on our YouTube channel. Like, follow, join VOA. This is Straight Talk Africa on The Voice of America. Call us now with your questions and comments. The number 202-619-3111. And the U.S. country code is 1. Call direct and we'll call you right back. Remember to keep your questions brief. Now back to Straight Talk Africa. Thank you very much, uh, Esther Gizuya, and welcome back to Straight Talk Africa, live from Washington. Once again, it's time to bring in my colleague and social media reporter, Maria Ma. Take it away again, Maria Ma. Well, uh, thanks, Shaka. Certainly, Saturday's announcement by the Electoral Commission to postpone the presidential election due uh, to security concerns has come under fire in some cases, and it doesn't look like the fire will be put out soon. It's certainly a huge topic of discussion at the moment. And before we go any further, let's check out some reaction uh, on the ground. How many years this insurgency has been taking place? For six years, why would this, this uh, six weeks be going to be due? So we are not, we're totally we are not in support in this uh, election postponement. It's not insecurity. They are planning something. Something is fishing inside. So we are dissatisfied with, with it. Nigerians, they are eager to choose their leader, the right person that will lead the nation. Actually, uh, we need change, seriously. Nigeria in, uh, Nigerians are not happy about uh, what is government doing right now. So we need change. Well, some reactions uh, there from the ground. Meanwhile, the electoral body is also being criticized for, fa uh, for failing, rather, to deliver at least 30 million voter registration cards in time for the scheduled February poll, the leading opposition party, the old Progressive Congress, has also strongly disagreed uh, with the decision to push back the vote, while others say this was the right thing to do for the country. And this leads us to our question of the week, uh, stating, what do you think about the decision to postpone the Nigerian presidential election? Well, thanks for using all our social media platform to communicate to us. Let's begin right away with a comment from Apero Joseph Oladimeji from Akure in Nigeria, who writes, Nigerians are funny and humor humorous. The date was set about 11 months ago, yet the PDP and their supporters didn't know there was need to fight Boko Haram until the last minute. Iraq and Afghanistan both had elections, and these are countries where nearly every state had some sort of security issue. But in, in, the, in Nigeria's case, it is just three states out of 36 that are having insecurity problems. Well, another reminder that we are tweeting live today. Use the hashtag VOA Nigeria 2015. And if you haven't yet, please follow us at VOA Shaka. And speaking of it, let's go to a tweet from Everest Jahali, who writes... I think it's right to postpone the election, bearing in mind the current security situation in Nigeria. However, I doubt if security will be improved in the next few weeks to make people vote without fear of Boko Haram. Well, Shaka, a range of uh, opinion out there, Shaka and guests. Indeed, indeed, the range of opinions right here. What about that uh, ambassador, really? How do you respond to those skeptics? Well, I... I... 
Nigeria, uh, what you have in Nigeria is democracy at work. Uh, the comment by the spokesman for APC is very well misplaced. First, it was INEC that made the decision, not the government. It was INEC that, that decided to react the way it did to the point made by the security forces. And all this comprising of Iraq and Afghanistan and Nigeria is, is so, suddenly, uh, suddenly out of place. For us in Nigeria, the two candidates are already giving the reasons why the elections were postponed. And <clears throat> for us, we rather, we rather delay and get it right than hurry and mess this up. You probably you, have a point. But what about others, frankly, who are saying that INEC was pressured by the ruling party PDP and the security forces? How can, I mean, how can anybody justify that? The security forces submitted their opinion, their, their, their observations, and they gave INEC two options. You either do the elections in everywhere except those three affected states, or you postpone the election. INEC made its choice. I see. How can you now blame, how can you now blame the, 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 the PDP or the government for that? Welcome. And in any case, INEC we have is independent in all its ramifications. The Council of State, which you uh, which first uh, referred to, is an advisory body. And it did not give, it did not, uh, correcting what you said, it did not give INEC the go ahead. It said, go and consult and make up your mind. Wait a minute. We it are emphasizing the independence of INEC. Everything I have seen, <coughs> frankly, suggests that it was briefed by the chairman, Professor Jagger, yes. and it was satisfied that, in fact, he can go ahead and deliver because he was able to convince the, the, the council that he had all the tools that he needed to do his job. But you just heard now, even from Abuja, that as of today, not even as of today, only se uh, close to 70% of the PVC have been delivered. Well, yes, but this, in fact, could even have been a much better election than the one that was conducted back in 2011. Well, well, Mariama, do you have any more feedback to share with our audience, please? Well, Shaka will move on to a posting uh, from Assam, Norman Gandhi. Uh, he's uh, writing to us from Durban in South Africa, and he says, due to the increase of uh, terror attacks, especially Boko Haram, I think Nigerian leaders are doing what's right for their country. It's good that they know the lives of their citizens come first. Well, another comment comes from uh, Emeka uh, Floyd Nwusu from Oweri in Nigeria, who says, the postponement speaks volume of the ruling party's desperation and panicky measures to retain power. They should be humble enough to, ac to accept faith because it is looking increasingly like we are going to have a new government in Nigeria come March 28th. Shaka. And guess, once again, your take on these ones. Sylvester, how do you respond to that? Uh, first, I will refer to Oladi Meji. But before then, I'd like to uh, make it clear that I'm not a spokesperson for the APC. We are patriotic, concerned Nigerians in the United States. And we cover the entire 50 states. Nigerians that are really troubled by what is going on. Now, the question is this. What makes it clear that after six weeks, uh, uh, Nigerian military will be able to defeat Boko Haram? And again... This election, we knew about it four years ago. And if not four years, years ago, in April, when girls were abducted, we should be preparing because we know what is coming ahead. Why did we wait? And for, lastly, Nigerian military, like I said, is one of the best and have all the resources. Is one of the best or, used, in to, Africa. or used to be one of it's the still, best? It's <laughs> still one of the best, if not politics being, them being undermined. When you don't, when you have someone to go to war, you give him cut last. When his opponent is using 21st century uh, equipment, what do you expect from him? You are sending him on suicide mission. They should be able to go to war and come back safely to meet their wives and children. But so, is it really only an issue of logistics, an issue of weapons? What, are we, what about the issues of morale? Ish, thank you. What so, about uh, the issues of... Uh, Welfare, because I have been a soldier by saying that's, what, that's, what, that's what, that. what I just said. Because you send them out to war, but you want them to come, you don't want them to come and see their wives and children. 
So you want to prepare them, give them the equipment that they need. So I, I said it the other day that I'm not of the opinion of begging the U.S. or any part of the world to help us because we have what it takes. Bill Clinton says it. He said there is nothing wrong in America that cannot be cured with what is right in America. Nigeria has all it takes to keep our military. I have been a, a paramilitary, 15 good years in immigration. I know what they go through. I know our police officers. They have children. They have wives. They are not properly taken care of. I see. But you want them to well, go and find the deadly enemy. The time happens not to be our ally. No, no, no. I will give you an opportunity later. I, because I, I, frankly, I need to respond to him. I will give you I an opportunity to to later. Because you people, you are not taking cognizance of the nature of the insurgency we are facing. Local, Boko Haram is not a local group facing uh, 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 pressing local issues. You have an international organized group. The Boko Haram is the West African component of the global Al Qaeda movement. And so you are not talking Nigerian, Nigerian troops facing local uprising. You are talking of a consolidated, concerted effort organized from outside to impose a certain religion, a certain philosophy on the country and being supported by extra forces. I and see. so saying that the Nigerian army, they are incompetent, is mostly unfair to them. We'll come to that later. Okay. Thanks, Mariema, for bringing us this week's audience reaction. Well, that will do it for today's social media segment. Uh, thank you, of course, Sylvester, and thank you, Your Excellency, uh, for chipping in and responding to our audience concerns. Uh, just a reminder that we appreciate all the feedback, whether it's in social media form or using other means to communicate to us. Please, please keep them coming. And if you are a new fan, just drop us a line at africatv at voanews.com. Once again, our email address is africatv at voanews.com. Or post your comment on our Facebook page. Just enter the keywords, Straight Talk Africa. Be sure to visit us online at voaafrica.com. Or you can uh, join our YouTube channel. Just subscribe to VOA TV to Africa. And please don't forget to follow us on Twitter at VOA Shaka. Now let's take a look at what's on tap for next week's program. Next week on Straight Talk Africa, innovators and entrepreneurs are transforming Africa, bringing the continent economic growth, progress, and opportunity. That's next week right here on Straight Talk Africa. Welcome back, and today we are discussing the postponement of the presidential and the general elections in Nigeria. Our distinguished guests are Professor Adebowale Adefuye, the Nigerian ambassador to the United States, and Sylvester Okele, the national chairman of the USA movement for Buhari Osibanjo campaign. He also serves as the chair of the executive committee for the Maryland Nigeria Sister States program. Gentlemen, I have to say frankly that uh, I am profoundly honored and exceedingly humbled Thank you. to have the opportunity to host the two of you on Straight Talk Africa. Thank you. You're most welcome. I gather that uh, we have the lifeline of the show, which are the telephone callers. Uh, good evening, Okolo from Nigeria. You're most welcome to Straight Talk Africa. Good evening, Mr. Shaka. I am hugely terrific. How are you today? So, so, Mr. Shaka, it's a pleasure. What is I'm your question, my friend? What is your question? Uh, you were supposed to vote on Saturday. What happened? Postponement of the election is the best option in this country, our Nigeria, because tension now reduced. Because before that election, we lost it. I'm afraid. Uh, we cannot hear you, Mr. Kolo, but I think the point was made that uh, the postponement is good, really. Uh, what, what about uh, Patrick? Uh, good evening, Patrick, from the same great nation of Nigeria. You're welcome to Straight Talk Africa. Patrick, are you there? I'm, I'm afraid that uh, he's dropped. Uh, let me come back to you. You were trying to make a point that... Uh, it is not only really the responsibility of the great Nigerian armed forces that uh, it goes beyond that. It is regional and international because you say that Boko Haram is in fact uh, linked to a major uh, international terrorist group and that is Al-Qaeda. Any hard evidence, empirical evidence right here? Of course there have been so many hard evidence. First, let me tell you, the first set of suicide bombers captured in Nigeria, were not Nigerians. Really? 
I'm telling you. These are people who could not even speak either English or French or any other Nigerian language. That's number one. The second side is that there is a distinct, there is a, a, a link, there's an apparent link in the style operation modalities mm. of both, both ISIS mm. and Boko Haram. Mm. The, the, the flag they carry, the way they operate, the, the, uh, the, 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 what, the way they talk, the objective, very similar. And if, if only the great America is looking for international, international coalition to fight ISIS, mm. come on. What is the, what come is on, the come Americans on. give you the tools that you need, by the yeah. way? Pardon me? The Americans have not given you the tools that well, you need. Uh, we, we, tools, we right? had problems. We, we had support from the international community, including the U.S. And there are problems. We had disagreement on, on the details of the implementation of the agreement. But those have been resolved. I now. see. Very good. Very good. Very good. A reminder that you are tuned in to Straight Talk Africa. To participate in our discussion, mm -hmm. please call us at 202-619-3111. U.S. country code is one. We'll continue our discussion in a moment, so please don't go away. Once again, let's take a look at the Independent National Electoral Commission. INEC arranges and conducts the registration of qualified voters. It monitors the political campaigns and provides the rules and regulations which govern political parties. The Election Commission conducts voter and civic education. It promotes sound democratic election processes and principles. Finally, the Election Commission conducts any referendum required pursuant to the provision of the 1999 Constitution or any other law or act of the National Assembly. We are able to touch on things that are important to people on an everyday basis. We hope that our viewers are getting inspired when they watch our show. They're getting a view of the world from a different perspective, things that perhaps are not in their immediate vicinity. Today, I could put in on the show something that is a little different, a little unique, and this gives me that uh, you know, inspiration to come to work. If you like today's show, please write and tell us what you think or give us some suggestions. Be sure to tell us what station you're tuned into. Our address, Straight Talk Africa, Voice of America, 330 Independence Avenue, Southwest, Washington, D.C., 20237, USA. Or send us an email at africatv at voanews.com. Log on to our website at voaafrica.com or post your comments on Facebook. Keywords, Straight Talk Africa. Thank you very much, uh, Esther Gizui. Uh, Sylvester, you heard what uh, Mr. Ambassador had to say about, uh, frankly, justifying why, in fact, the election, frankly, should have been postponed. I see no justification in that. The, in the Bible, Abraham was confronted with uh, millions of uh, Amish. The Bible said that he walked with men trained in his own house. I don't believe that U.S. or Britain or anywhere we have what it takes to help our people. Let me ask you, throughout this time, the, the both candidates have been campaigning in the far north. Was there any Boko Haram attack? But yet their rallies went successful, very successful. So the same effort, the same military, police, secret service that they put in place, if they use it just for one day for the election, everything will be okay. Again, neighboring African countries want to help in fighting Boko Haram. Shouldn't it have been an opportunity to make sure that the election, everyone is pro protected? Using security as excuse, I don't think it helps us. You know, this is an undermining of democracy, and we have to face the reality. And if any one of us that live in the U.S. that doesn't see it, that we think there is something wrong, that we're not trying to help our people with truth. Well, thank you very much. Let me go to Equatorial Guinea. Good evening, Kennedy. You are most welcome to Straight Talk Africa. Hello. Good evening, Mr. Saka. I am hugely terrific. Uh, what is your question, my brother? Yeah, I... Uh, just to make small contribution, uh, the, the, the postponement of the election is very, very correct, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because no nation goes to election when, when they are in war. The insurgency is a complete war. It is an insurgency terrorist. Even the Americans have fed, uh, have, have not been doing it all well in Iraq, 
in the IC or in Afghanistan, in, in Syria, there have been insurgencies, not a complete war. So the Nigerian military and the Nigerian government are doing their best. And postponing the election for three weeks or six weeks or one month is nothing. Our lives are more important than the election. I see. And the APC just complaining for the sake of complaining. Even if the NGS come down to conduct the election in Nigeria, there's no way Buhari will win Jonathan. Well, if the NGS come down to conduct the election, there's no way the APC will win PDP or Buhari will win Jonathan. Your, so power, the your election, power, Kennedy, I think, uh, I think your point is well made. When you get into the business as to who is going to win and who is going to lose, this is a totally foreign terrain for me here now. But the fact of the matter, frankly, is that, uh, yes, you do have security problems, but you have had even much more serious security problems in a country that he actually referred to Iraq and Afghanistan. And these two countries have actually held elections. And well, it's, not, it's not the same. It's exactly not the same. In Iraq and Afghanistan, there was a massive, complete U.S. presence. And the, the armies of those countries <coughs> were completely decimated, not in existence at that time. But you are not an so, occupied nation. So those countries you are referring to were occupied. The, uh, hey, we are not an armies. occupied nation. You and the, the point is, in logistics, if you look at the size of yeah. Nigeria, yeah. the size of Nigeria, yeah. for you to be able to police and, uh, and guarantee security of lives, property, electoral materials, in that period, at the same time when elections, when insurgency is being confronted, it is virtually impossible. But you, you've got to be realistic. But and somebody Ambassador. was talking about, campaign, about uh, campaigns. Yeah. Campaigns are something totally but, different but from But Mr. Ambassador, yes. uh, there are some people, frankly, who are saying this decision to postpone elections yes. is not a reflection of the security concerns, but rather a reflection of the political situation yes. because a lot of indicators would seem to suggest, if anything, the Buhari people, the APC people, are having political momentum. The man has been addressing what some would characterize as mammoth crowds. The incumbent president is not frankly doing and that. It depends, it depends on who is, what you are seeing and who is telling you that. So uh, I don't want to go into the dictates. I don't want to engage in what is Pakistan politics. All I'm just telling you is that as far as we are concerned in Nigeria, mm -hmm. what is important is not who wins, but we want to, uh, to conduct a free, fair, credible, peaceful election. And then, mm -hmm. if we are doing things, say, they are having a, a, a momentum, well, I don't want to go into the issue of whether the cars right, are right. original or they are rented. Right, or right. I don't want to go into that. Let me ask and you, I, I, I want to, to uh, avoid that. Let me ask but, you about uh, the endorsement of Major General Muhammad Buhari, retired but certainly not uh, tired mm -hmm. of a former fellow general, General Orushegun Obasanjo, retired and also not politically retired, a man who has been military, who has been head of state of Nigeria, not once, mm -hmm. not twice, but three times, a man who is a founding father of the ruling party PDP, and he is still a card-carrying member of PDP. What kind of impact do you think his uh, endorsement is likely to have on this election, really? I respect President uh, General Olusha Gombajo very much. I know him personally. He's entitled to his opinion. But President Obasanjo is not the only former head of state. You don't know what General Gohan is thinking. You don't know what Chief uh, Shodakon is thinking. You don't know what President Bangda is thinking. You don't know what President Chagari is thinking. So if one former head of president endorses one person, you need to be able to ask if you want to make any mileage out of that. But this what is, other, a, this what is other, a man what who other? is like a mentor. A mentor a of mentor the man change. that occupies Asorok. A He's a, the one who picked him up. A mentor can change his mind any time. There have been disagreements. They are both human beings. They are both human beings. Anything can happen for you to have personal disagreement and you can disagree with the person you mentored or, or whatever. Let's bring so in President your brother from Nigeria. is free, completely free, to, 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 to uh, voice out his opinion, just as the other former president are also free to vote. Except that they have not yet. Yes. Let's go to uh, Mr. Ubede, Ube, Ubede from Nigeria. Good evening. Hello, good evening. Yes. yes, sir. How is 
How are you people doing in the studio? I am hugely terrific. What about you? Where are you calling from in Nigeria? And what is your question? Please, you have one minute. I am, I am calling from uh, the North Central Nigeria State. Uh huh. Uh huh. And your question, sir? I'm afraid. Uh, directly to the ambassador in the studio. Yes, please. Make it short and sweet. Okay. I, I want to ask him that uh, I believe as an ambassador he has uh, reviewed the reaction of the French, the France president when uh, journalists uh, were killed. And uh, he should compare that with that of Jonathan in Nigeria. When 200 people were killed by Boko Haram, the, Jonathan was in Lagos for a political rally. And now that uh, the elections were postponed uh, because of uh, security reasons, how, uh, uh, how is uh, Jonathan assuring Nigerians that within the six weeks after Boko Haram has taken Nigeria over four years, without any counter-attack from the Nigerian forces, now from six weeks, Thank you. Uh, security will be guaranteed for elections to take place. Thank you, thank you very I, I much. Just, I think uh, we have already my answered answers, that. My, my, mm. uh, my answer is brief. That question. This is the first time right. they have a multinational force. Yes. Supported by the UN. Yes. Supported by AU. Yes. Facing Boko Haram. Because it has now been clear to everybody yes. that Boko Haram it operates be, in Nigerian will, borders. It will be game up. Yes. Very good. Now let me come to you, to, to you uh, uh, Sylvester. I know that uh, there are some people who are concerned that in fact Nigeria may be headed backwards, that its future, in fact, democratically, could be backwards in the sense that uh, there was June 12, mm -hmm. 1993, Thank you. when you had perhaps arguably one of the freest, one of the most transparent, most mm -hmm. credible elections in the history of your country. Mm -hmm. But of course, you know what happened? A General Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida annulled the election which, of course, was apparently won by my billionaire Mashud Abiyora, who had run against uh, uh, Bashir Tofa. Not only that, that is a fear of most Nigerians, but also because you cannot predict Nigerians. I always tell people, I love my country because anything can happen. But we want to make sure that we fight the negative and show the world the true Nigerian. That's why we ask for transparency. That's why we call for international observers at this election. Now, if you watch the momentum, uh, someone mentioned that, that everything has come down. Yeah, everything has to come down because in every election, tension has to be high. Now, if you watch the momentum, you see that the people want to embrace change. People are dissatisfied, including women and children. And it doesn't matter about endorsement or how much money raised. It's about the people who want change, who are being threatened, who are being suffering and so on. Could you imagine in a situation where governors who haven't paid their civil servants who yeah. donate 50 million well, just to buy, for, uh, uh, buy, buy position? I hope the future of Nigeria is not behind it, that you are not going again for an honest shoneken. And I pray it doesn't for happen. For three months and get a military That's general. That's why this is a wrong decision. And if, if, if we know we this... Are, well, <laughs> unfortunately, time happens not to be our ally. We have to agree that we have to have you again in this studio, Mr. Ambassador, after the election. And we take it from there. Thank you. On that note, thanks to our distinguished guests, Professor Adebowale Adefuye, the Nigerian ambassador to the United States, and Sylvester O'Kelly, the national chairman of the USA movement for Buhari Osibanjo campaign. He also serves as the chair of the executive committee for the Maryland and Nigeria Sister States program. And Kayode Ido, spokesperson for the INEC chairman, Professor Jega who joined us earlier via telephone link up from the Nigerian capital, Abuja. Thanks to our affiliate stations, along with our viewers and listeners, we thank you for tuning in. For many of our Voice of America radio affiliates, learning English is coming up next, and tomorrow morning is Daybreak Africa with James Bate. On behalf of the Voice of America, thanks for tuning in to Straight Talk Africa. In the meantime, get better, not better Nigeria and Africa. And please remember to keep the African hopes alive.